Hey everyone, my name is Megan. Welcome back to Around the Cauldron. Today we're going to be talking about how to tell the difference between a sign and something that just happens. A lot of times new witches, new pagans, new seekers, we'll call them seekers, new seekers will become obsessed with seeing if anything is a sign from a deity or are their spells working properly. And there's become this big obsession in the community of looking for signs and trying to find or trying to figure out if certain things are signs or not. And so today we're going to talk about, is it magical or is it just mundane? Don't forget that I'm running a giveaway during the entire month of December. I will leave a link for that in the description and in the show notes. You have a chance to win one of six different prizes. I am giving away a signed copy of Althea Sebastiani's book, Paganism for Beginners, a signed copy of M.A. Phillips' book, River Magic, a signed copy of Cloud's CD, Misconceptions, um, a custom altar cloth or throw blanket, depending on whichever one you want. And then I'm also giving away two year ahead tarot readings that will be handwritten and sent to you in the mail. There are many different ways for you to enter. You have an obligatory entry and then there are other options to gain extra entries if you follow me on social media or you leave comments on the YouTube videos. So make sure that you check the link out in the description and in the show notes and get all of the extra entries that you can. The winner will be picked live on YouTube. I think I set the date as January 8th. Um, I'm not 100% sure of that right now off the top of my head. I will leave that in the description and in the show notes too. So make sure that you enter that giveaway and good luck. So as I said at the beginning, a lot of new seekers are, I think obsessed is a strong word, but they look for signs everywhere. They want to know if seeing a specific bird is a sign or a feather or seeing different numbers all the time. They want to know if these are signs from different deities, spirits, ancestors, or whatever they're looking for signs of whatever they think is sending them signs or whatever they want or whoever they want to be sending signs to them. That's going to be important when we get to the towards the end of this episode. But what's a sign? What, what is the purpose of a sign? What is a sign or an omen for? What does it do? So when we think of signs in the pagan or the witchcraft community, normally these are going to be things like deity communication, ancestors, someone is reaching out to you from beyond the veil and they're trying to get your attention or um, you want to know if certain spells are working or why your candle flame is behaving strangely, right? I see this a lot with new seekers, with people who are just coming to the path, um, whatever that path may be, and they are constantly wanting to know if certain seemingly random or odd occurrences or encounters that they have are signs from deities or spirits. I'm going to burst a lot of people's bubbles right now. Um, nine times out of 10, it's not a sign. <laughs> that might be an unpopular opinion. It might ruffle some feathers, but nine times out of 10, that random occurrence that you had is not a sign. It was just a random occurrence. So not everything that you see is going to be a sign. Not everything that you hear is going to be a sign or that you think of. So some common things that people think of when they think of getting signs from deities are going to be animals or certain um, inanimate objects like feathers or crystals or different colors or numbers. Um, we oftentimes see these things and think of them as being signs from whatever deity that animal is associated with or whatever um, spirit comes to our minds when we see these particular animals. There are also a lot of 
um, signs and omens that have cultural significance. I mean, humans have been looking for patterns and signs since the dawn of time. It's the way that our brains are wired. We are wired to find patterns where they, there might not be patterns. This is why we can see faces in certain things that don't actually have a face. It's just part of, part of our biology, okay? So when we think of these signs, we need to keep that in mind. We need to realize that as a species, we have certain biological predispositions. Anyway, um, that's, I'm getting ahead of myself there. So when we think of signs in terms of animals, normally this is going to be, you know, I had an encounter with a, with a butterfly. A butterfly crossed my path today right in front of me and its colors were so bright and vivid and who is trying to contact me? And a lot of times this is in the middle of springtime, okay? Um, <laughs> Chances are the butterfly that crossed your path in the middle of the spring is not a sign. It's normal butterfly behavior. We all know that seeing specific animals can be signs from deities or other, other divine beings or higher beings or spirits or whatever you call them. I'm just going to call them deities, but you know, fill in the blank with whatever term you use. We know that deities can send signs to us. That's a fact. That's just something that can happen and it does happen. When you see an animal and it's just like a random odd occurrence, right? You're, you're walking in the park and a snake slithers across your path. Chances are that one snake is not a sign. What would make it a sign is if it's a pattern, if it's not just one occurrence, but several occurrences over the course of several days or weeks or even months, depending on however long you're ignoring the sign. Um, so I had an encounter with a snake when we went to a botanical garden here in Florida and it was just a normal encounter. I was in a botanical garden, I was walking along the path and the snake slithered across the path in front of me. It was memorable because it was exciting and I had seen a pretty sneak and I tried to look at it closer, which I don't recommend, but it moved very fast. Now, if over the course of the next several days, I would have had more encounters with snakes and not just the physical animal, um, but snake imagery, seeing snakes, um, dreaming about them, seeing them in my divination or my meditations, then I would look further into what that snake might mean as a sign. But just a snake on its own, not generally a sign from anyone. Another thing that people commonly look at as far as signs go is numbers and repeating numbers like 1111 or 2020, or um, you look at your microwave every day for a week and it says 444 or something. Those can be signs. For sure, it could also be that you have gotten into the habit of looking at the microwave or the clock or whatever it is at a specific time. And then of course, you're going to see the same time every time you look at it. I am not knowledgeable about numerology and angel numbers or what those sorts of repeating um, number patterns mean. So I'm not going to speak about those, but I'll leave links in the description and in the show notes to some sources that might have information on those types of signs. I can't say for myself that I really see repeating numbers a lot. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just not something I've ever paid attention to, or it's just not a way that deity chooses to communicate with me. Another thing that new seekers and even those of us ha who have been doing this for a while look at when we think we're seeing signs is different topics, ideas, um, even shapes and symbols. This is going to be harder to discern whether or not it's a sign, especially now that everything is digital and everything has an algorithm. So I have seen in many different forums, on Instagram, on Twitter. I saw it on TikTok when I was on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok anymore. I don't like that platform. Um, but it was this constant, like I keep seeing images of, 
Athena everywhere on the internet. I am seeing videos of people who talk about their um, experiences working with Athena. I am getting ads for statues of Athena. I am seeing articles written about Athena and <laughs> it's not a sign. It, I mean, I can't say definitively, no, it's not a sign because I don't know your path. I don't know your experiences and I don't know what you're feeling, but 98% of the time, it's not a sign. It's the algorithms of the internet at work. It's just the way the internet runs. You know, it's created to find out what you're interested in and then feed you more of it. So if you're on TikTok, for example, and you're liking every video that pops up of talking about Athena, it's going to feed you more videos talking about Athena or Greek mythology. That's just what it does. So it's harder to tell if something like that is an actual sign or if it's just the internet algorithm at work. And it even goes outside of different platforms. We all know, we all have probably experienced talking about something around our phones or our smart devices like Alexa or what, whatever Google's is, um, and then scrolling through the internet and being fed ads about something that we talked about but never actually searched for. Editing Megan here, I just want to make it very clear for what I just said that I'm not accusing Google or Alexa or any of the other uh, big tech names out there of spying on us. There have been reports that Alexa and things like Alexa do listen to you actively when you are not using it because they have to be able to know what you're saying. Anyway, that's besides the point. I wanted to make it clear that I'm not accusing them of spying on you or me. This is just something that I have noticed in my own day-to-day -day life. And we need to remember that correlation does not equal causation. And I have no proof of this. Okay, we can continue. So we have to be really careful when we're looking at different things like that because chances are it's just the internet and it's not actually a sign that Athena is trying to speak with you. One of the last things that a lot of people talk about in the witchcraft and pagan communities are candles. And candle reading is a form of divination on its own, which I really have no experience with. I can't sit there and look at a candle. It makes me really uncomfortable. However, a lot of people question the behaviors of different candles, um, like your candle flickers, or it goes out, or your flame gets really, really big, or it ends up getting really small. Or you're, you know, you've got two different candles and one burns faster than the other, even though they're the same type of candle, or you're candle in a container just explodes. When we look at instances like this, I think it's important that we look at it from a mundane perspective first, because there are a million different reasons that your candle might be behaving strangely. So when we talk about a candle um, flickering, right? It could be a draft that you didn't know you had in the room. It could be that the wick is not the proper size or material for that type of wax. You know, all of those things affect the way a candle behaves. Is the wick center in the candle? Was the wick long enough? Was it placed properly? What type of wax is the candle made from? Is the candle made in a batch or are they made one by one? If your candle wick isn't center in your candle and you're burning it in a glass container, and you burn it for long periods of time and the flame is close to the glass, it's going to explode eventually because you're, the candle is heating up the glass to such a degree that it causes the glass to break. It's happened to me before. And it was my mistake because I wasn't paying attention and I let the candle burn to such a degree that it caused the glass to break. Your candle behavior isn't necessarily going to be a sign. Some people think that um, your candle wick flickering, um, it's hard to describe for podcast listeners, but 
like like sputtering I don't like getting big and then little and big and little really fast a lot of people think that's a spirit who is interfering with your candle or interfering with your spell chances are it's not those sorts of occurrences aren't as common as the internet would have us believe and that's something that I plan on doing an entire topic about or an entire episode about is uh, what we see on the internet versus what actually happens in real life. I think that's an important thing to talk about, but that's not what I'm talking about today. So when we're looking for signs, we're going to see them everywhere. We're going to see things that are happening that could potentially be signs because we are looking for them. It's like that phenomenon that happens if you've ever bought a car or you have ever owned a car or anything new, period, new to you, right? You get it and then all of a sudden you see the same thing literally everywhere, right? It's because you have it now and you own one, you know what it looks like, you know what it feels like, so now you're looking for it elsewhere and then you suddenly see it everywhere, right? The same thing happens when we're looking for signs and omens and symbols from our deities. If we are actively looking for uh, butterflies, for example, we'll just go with butterflies. If we are actively looking for butterflies everywhere, we're going to see them because we're actively looking for them. But what makes a sign a sign is that it follows a pattern. It's not just a one-off occurrence. And it isn't just seeing the physical thing, okay? If I were to see a butterfly as a sign, I would see butterflies physically, like the actual insect, but I would also dream about them. I would probably pull my cards. Oh, I think, what? I'm trying to think. There's a, a suit in my Wild Unknown Tarot deck that involves butterflies. I think it's the wands. I'm not sure, Um, but I would probably pull wands in my divination if I'm using that deck all the time. I would dream about butterflies. I would see them everywhere, not just physically, but everywhere. I mean, I don't know how else to explain that. And we, when we're looking for signs or when we think we see a sign, we need to keep the scientific basis in mind first because Animals don't exist specifically for humans. Animals don't exist for us. Animals don't exist for the purpose of a deity to send signs to us all the time. Animals exist in their own right. They are their own beings. They follow their own patterns. They have their own agendas. They live for themselves. So it is very unfair of us to push our agendas onto the animals and say that every single one that we see is a sign of something. Sometimes the squirrel outside my window is just a squirrel outside my window because my apartment complex is covered in oak trees. It's just a squirrel. Different things will affect the types of animals that you see in your area. Migration patterns. You know, there was a couple of weeks ago I was sitting in my living room and on my patio there is a hibiscus bush. And inside this bush were birds, right? But there was a red cardinal in the bush. And I have never seen a red cardinal in this area before. So my first thought was, oh, what does this mean? I am seeing this bird and I have never seen one before right here. But it wasn't a sign because that was the only time that I saw a red cardinal. I didn't see them anywhere else. And upon further research into red cardinals and the migratory patterns of birds, now that I live in Florida, things are totally different, right? Birds fly south for the winter. I'm not used to being this far south because I come from Oregon. And then before that, I was in Nevada. And then I was in California. You know, the the patterns of bird migration are different on the West Coast than they are on the East Coast. And since it was the only time that I saw that bird, plus after reading about their migration patterns and how it is more common to see them down here where I am in the fall and the winter, I didn't really take it as a sign. I mean, I took it as a beautiful experience because they're really pretty birds and they weren't that far away from me. 
but it wasn't a sign. We also need to keep in mind the seasons and the, the mating patterns of different animals when we're looking for signs. I know I'm focusing a lot on animals right now, but that is mainly what I see when new seekers or anyone else is talking about seeing signs or omens. They're talking about seeing different animals. So I think it's the most prominent one. The other one being candles, but I don't know. Candles just, they're chemical. They involve chemical reactions and many different things can affect the way a candle burns as well. I have one candle that always sparks. And when it sparks, it's because I haven't trimmed the wick because it just burns weird. So I don't take that candle sparking as, oh my gosh, something's happening. You know, it's, oh, hey, dum-dum, you forgot to trim the wick and it's going to spark and you need to fix that, right? <sighs> the, all of the ingredients that go into making a candle can make it behave strangely. The different type of wax. Is it a wax blend? Um, are there any fragrances, essential oils, a synthetic, natural, whatever? Um, even the different ingredients as far as colors and dyes and herbs that go into making a candle can make it behave different. I see people all the time um, with these beautiful candles that have loose herbs sprinkled in the top of the wax. Okay, and they burn the candle and then that top layer of wax melts and then their candle basically, instead of just the wick being on fire, the whole top of the candle is on fire. And they're like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? Like my candle is literally on fire, the whole thing. And the simple explanation is that those loose herbs are no longer covered in wax and they are now on fire and that is a fire hazard. <laughs> It doesn't mean that something is interfering with your candle or your spell or that there is a spirit in the area or a deity is trying to communicate with you. It means you need to put the candle out, scrape out the herbs, and don't burn your house down. So what can you do or how do you determine if it's a sign or not? You're going to have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Is there a scientific reason behind what's happening? Again, going back to the animals. Um, are the birds migrating? Is it a mating season? Is this a normal behavior? Is the animal sick? You know, where are you? Where's your, your geographical location? What season is it? Normally there is an explanation. Then you want to look at the, the um, oh, there's a word. The, no, come on brain, you can do it. Uh, there's a word on the tip of my tongue that I can't think of right now. Something happening like over and over again. Is it a re like a repeated pattern? That's not the word I was going for, but that works, I guess. Um, is it just once or does it happen over and over again? And is it just the physical animal that you're seeing or are you seeing it in your dreams? And is it just the physical thing that you're seeing or are you seeing something in your dreams? Are you having thoughts pop into your head that might not be your own? Um, you're going to want to ask yourself, is it something that just happened once? Is it something that keeps happening? And is it something that is taking on more than one form? Is it a physical manifestation? Is it something you're dreaming about, something that you're thinking about, things that you're seeing like billboards, movies, TV shows, books? When signs occur, it normally isn't just one day and it normally isn't just one thing. Now, this could be different. If you have been working with a specific deity for a long time, you might have such a relationship where they can um, send you something send you a sign of something and you know that that is what that means. That's, that's different and that comes from cultivating a relationship with very specific deities and I'm not here to tell you that your cultivated relationship ground rules and guidelines are incorrect. That is something totally different. But for anyone who is looking for signs of deities, it's normally going to follow a pattern and be repeated. So once you've answered those questions and you're still not sure if it's a magical thing or if it's a mundane thing, you can do some divination. 
um, pull some tarot cards, ask a pendulum, whatever sort of divination that you choose to do to give you insight into that situation. You can also meditate on it, do some journey work, journal about it. I always, always, always recommend journaling because it helps you find patterns of things that are happening. Um, and when you journal, I recommend free writing. Uh, especially if you're looking for signs or trying to figure out if things are a sign. Because when you free write, your your stream of consciousness just flows onto the paper. And then you go back and you read it, and it can be easier to pick up and distinguish certain um, patterns and symbols that maybe you didn't recognize before. I also want to make it very clear here, now that we're towards the end of this episode, that... Not everything is going to be a sign. I know I said this at the beginning, but in the witchcraft community, we have a tendency to blow everything out of proportion. Everything is a sign. Everything has a magical reason. Every knock that you hear in your house is a spirit trying to communicate with you. Every time your candle flickers, something is going on, right? That's not the reality for most of the community. That's not the that's not the reality in general, I want to say, because we can't discount science. We can't discount reality. And when we're looking at things like animals being signs, if we are completely disregarding the migration pattern of birds or that animal's natural behavior, we really hinder our own personal practice and our own growth. It limits us when we can't see both sides of the coin. Not everything has to have a magical reason. Not everything has to have a magical purpose. It's perfectly fine for that butterfly to just be a butterfly. It's perfectly fine for your candle flame to just flicker because that's what it does. It's perfectly fine for the feather that you come across to just be a feather that a bird lost. Not everything needs a magical reason. And this is especially true when it comes to looking for signs. Because of the way our brains are developed, we are biologically inclined to find patterns. It is a survival mechanism cultivated over thousands and thousands of years, okay? We, we look for those patterns. I mean, now in, in modern society, there's not really a need for us to look for patterns because we have weather prediction. We have, you know, we have um, grocery stores. We don't need to look at the patterns of the animals as they move across the area and remember them because we can just go to the grocery store. We don't need to remember the patterns and the behavior of the bees and the butterflies and the pollinators in the area because we go to the grocery store. We don't need to recognize the patterns of the clouds because we have meteorologists and the weather channel that will tell us, hey, that strange cloud formation is probably dangerous. You should take shelter, right? So, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble but part of what I do here, everyday life as a modern witch, is to help people realize that you can live every day magically without everything needing a magical reason. So if you're looking for signs, you're going to find them because that's what the human brain does. If you're scrolling through social media and you're actively participating in social media by liking and commenting and following, your social media is going to feed you more of what you're liking and following and commenting. It's not a sign, it's, it's the internet algorithm. I hope that answers some questions for you. I hope you found it helpful. I know it can be disheartening to hear that not everything is a sign and that sometimes things that happen are just things that happen. But again, I think it's really important for us as magical beings to be able to distinguish the mundane from the magical and realize that Sometimes the mundane is just mundane and it doesn't have a magical reason behind it. 
So thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Leave a comment in the comments below on some things that maybe you thought were signs but turned out not to be, or maybe some, some signs that you were ignoring that just ended up being thrown at you over and over and over again. Um, if you're comfortable sharing, of course. And I will talk to you soon. my TV. <laughs> I have a little bonus section for you all today because it's December and I've got things to talk about. Um, the first thing I want to say is specifically for podcast listeners, um, I know that my episodes have gotten shorter over time. I find that it is more manageable for me and I don't have to try to fill the episodes with a bunch of fluff and stuff just to make the episode longer. So the episodes will probably stick around the 20 to 30 minute mark. Unless I have a guest on, those normally go longer. Um, speaking of guests, this goes for everyone. I am in the middle of getting a couple of guests lined up for the new year. This is going to be um, a few different authors. Patreon, you know who I'm talking about. I will announce it for everybody else as soon as I have dates lined up for that. But yes, I'm working on getting some guests on the show. Um, a side note for that, if you want to be a guest on the show, if you want to be a guest on my podcast and my YouTube channel, reach out to me. If you think you have something to talk about, or you want to have a conversation with me, or you want to share a new book that you're writing, or whatever, um, if you have something of value to share, I am more than willing to listen and possibly give you a platform to share that information. With that being said, I am very particular um, about the people I have on the show, especially since I have had some people on the show in the past that really don't uphold all of the values that I'd like to portray, especially moving forward. Um, so to protect the integrity of my channel and my podcast, as well as you as a creator, um, if I don't feel like we will vibe or I'm not interested in the topic, um, particularly or it goes against things that I believe. For example, if you are a um, white person and you wanna come onto the show and talk about shamanism, I'm probably gonna tell you no. Um, but yeah, if you feel like you have something to share, let me know. Reach out to me via email. That information is always in the description and in the show notes. I would love to have more people on to talk about whatever, whatever they fancy. Um, what else do I have to talk about in this bonus section? Um, I, my book, I guess. I'm still writing my book. I'm in the editing and revising phase right now. Chances are it's not going to be out in January like I had hoped. I'm leaning more towards Imolk and in the springtime. I think that coincides greatly on a spiritual level for me for reasons. Um, but it is still... In process I'm still writing it um, I'm almost done so I am probably going to be looking for either beta readers or arc readers to read it and either give me feedback or leave a review whenever that happens I will let you all know lastly I might end up taking an impromptu week or so off at the end of the month in the beginning of January or whenever it happens um, for those who have been listening to my podcast since the beginning, you're going to find this funny, but can you guess? Can you guess? I'll give you a few seconds to guess at what's happening. Did you guess? Did you hear? I'm moving again. Is anybody surprised? <laughs> So I'm staying in Florida. We're staying in the same area. We are just getting out of this horrendous apartment complex and buying a house. So that is happening. And depending on when it closes, I might just end up taking an impromptu week or two off from the channel and the podcast so that I can get the moving stuff done. 
I'm not trying to do like I did when we moved from Oregon to Florida and backlog all of my things, well, not backlog, but like pre-record everything because that was stressful. Um, but yeah, that's happening. Um, we're still staying in Florida. We're staying in the same area. I'm not like moving across the country again. I really don't want to do that ever again because it was awful. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say in the bonus section. Just random, random things, random things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I also, oh, I redid, redid, updated my tiers on Patreon. So if you've ever wanted to help support my show and my channel and the different things that I do, I would love for you to check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash round the cauldron. I've got a $1, $3, and $5 tier, and each tier gets special patron exclusive perks and content. So that's totally up to you. I know everybody is really struggling right now financially because of COVID and the pandemic and the awfulness that is 2020 and soon to be 2021. But if that's something that you're interested in, feel free to do that. And I will talk to everybody soon. Bye.